Are you stuck in tutorial hell when it comes to learning a programming language? Are you just trying to get to that point where you consider yourself an intermediate? In this video, I'm going to talk about how I went from beginner to intermediate in both SQL and Python and give concrete examples of how I did so. While my focus has been on SQL and Python, this approach will likely work for any programming language out there. There is one exception that we'll get to as we start talking about this a bit further that may be a bit tougher, but generally this should work for most situations. So first, let's talk about the beginner themselves. I want to just quickly go through. In the beginning, yes, if you want to stick to a tutorial course, I recommend finding one and sticking to it. But I recommend trying to find something relatively recent. The reason being that there are times, especially in the Python world, if you search for how to do something in Python, a lot of times you'll get the Python 2 way to do things. And there are oftentimes better ways to do things in Python 3 that just simply didn't exist in Python 2. For example, in Python, F strings were introduced in Python 3.6. So anything before that point won't have those. And they're awesome. They are super helpful. To me, they are the easiest way to understand something that is being printed out in Python. That's why I say try to find something a bit more current if you can. That may not all be, always be the case. If your language changes a bit slower, that may not really be a big deal. You may not be able to find something, and if not, that's okay. One other big thing that I would say for whatever tutorial you choose, make sure it has some projects in it. And we'll get to more on why in just a few minutes. But if you're not going to do a tutorial, obviously the documentation is probably going to be your best bet beyond that. You may consider taking a second set of tutorials if your programming language has different areas to it. For example, Python has general programming, but then it also has machine learning, data analytics, AI, and various other kind of subtopics in that area, natural language processing. It may be something that you really want to look a bit further into because that's the area you're interested in. And that I'd say it's okay. But again, I would stick to one particular tutorial and that would be it. So one thing I see people try to do sometimes is they really focus on memorizing syntax. And don't get me wrong, memorizing syntax is a good thing, but memorizing syntax is kind of like trying to learn a language and just focusing on vocabulary. You can do a lot with that vocabulary. You can probably understand the language. You may even be able to write the language. You may even be able to conjugate verbs in the language. But when it comes to actually t speaking the language, that's a different story. And so I feel like memorizing syntax is kind of the same thing. There's not a gotta catch them all type of thing for syntax. I mean, it's syntax. That's all it is. If you don't remember it, you can look it up. The important thing to focus on here is the concepts. Know what assigning a variable does. Know what your loops do. Know what an if statement does. Know the data structures that you're gonna have access to. Know the types of variables you can store. That is what's really important because those are your puzzle pieces that you're gonna to have to use. But like I say, you can always look up the syntax. There are still times where I go and I look up syntax in SQL just because it may be something that I don't use overly often. And instead of trying to store that in my brain, I know the tools there. I know I can just go look up the syntax if I need it. Yes, memorizing syntax can be nice. It can be helpful. It can help you increase your speed, things like that. But to me as a beginner, the important part is knowing the tools available. There is one big caveat to this though. There are certain languages uh, I can think of things that are a bit more proprietary, that are not discussed in Stack Overflow and things like that. So, for example, PeopleSoft has a programming language in it. You're not going to find very many resources talking about the syntax for that. That might be something where you want to make sure you take your own notes. That might be something where you want to make sure you have some documentation internally or, or whatever. You want to make sure that you have documentation on something like that. If you're with a language that's more, you know, standard and it has thousands of Stack Overflow posts out there, then don't, don't worry about memorizing the syntax. Know about the tools you have. Now, this is the important part. One of two things have happened. 
you've either finished the tutorial or you've gotten bored of the tutorial and you feel like you have a decent grasp of what has been talked about and you want more of a challenge. And so that's where this part of it comes in. And this to me is the part that really got me to intermediate in both situations for SQL and Python. And I would even say this ended up getting me to more to advanced section of SQL. Here's the thing, start a project. I know you've heard this before. I know, I know, I know, but hang with me because I do have some things that I want to add into this. So first up, it should be something you do not know how to do. It should not be something where you look at it and you're like, how the hell am I supposed to do that? It should be something like, okay, I can see where I would start here, but maybe I might be confused here and how in the world did they get there? That might be something where you could take that on. But if you have no concept of where you even begin, that may not be a good project idea. So once you've got your project idea, here's the thing. Don't plan out the entire thing. In fact, don't even plan out most of the thing. Come up with an MVP, a minimum viable product. This is something that has become more and more kind of in vogue in the developer slash business analyst world. And to me, it is a great way to start the learning process. So a minimum viable product is exactly what it sounds like. It is a set of minimum functionality that you want to start with. And I'm gonna go through a concrete example of that momentarily, but this is really an important thing because after you have this MVP, you can iterate. And the most important thing of all, you can start refactoring your own code. But here's the thing, I think a lot of people struggle with finding project ideas. The nice thing about refactoring your code is you are constantly rewriting your code, meaning you are constantly putting more time into what you need to be doing, which is writing code. You're thinking, you should be thinking about the code that you've written and trying to break it down and make it better. And if you're doing that, that's something where you're gonna learn that much more in my opinion and you're also gonna have to have fewer project ideas to get you started because it's gonna be something where you're gonna have to go and rework code in your MVP. And you're probably thinking, but you're rewriting a lot of code in that situation, aren't you? And yes, you're absolutely right, you should be. That is one of the reasons I suggest this approach is because you have to come up with fewer project ideas. If you're constantly reevaluating and refactoring your code, and making it better and finding better ways to do things, you're improving yourself that much more when it comes to solving the next problem, when it comes to thinking of the next problem. I know a lot of people talk about doing projects, but I really haven't seen very many talk about this kind of approach that I took where I just refactored almost my entire code every single time that I went to add something new. I had to reevaluate, I had to see, okay, since I'm going to add this in now, does what I wrote before work? If not, I need to go change it. If it does, okay, but can I make it better? So that's, that was something to me that really stood out in that process for me, is that I was constantly going and looking at my old code and trying to see what problems I had with it and what I could change it to to solve those problems. You may need a few projects to make this happen, but I think if you take this approach, this is something where ultimately you're gonna get past that beginner level because the important thing here is you are able to solve problems. One other thing I would say before we dive in this project, if you can't think of a project, I recommend checking out the awesome list of projects and I'll link that in the description. It's a useful list of projects that can be done in most programming languages. It may be worth checking to see if somebody else has done that project in the language you're choosing, just so that you can compare notes at the end, but don't look at their code before you actually do the project. You don't want them to influence what you're gonna do because the most important thing about this project is you need to be able to solve problems you need to be able to come up with the solutions for those problems. So 
that to me is what coding is all about. It's about having a problem and using code to solve it. And that's why I think emphasizing those concepts rather than memorizing syntax is so important in the beginning stage. So let's talk about the project that I did that really pushed me from beginner to intermediate in Python. I had been wondering so long, how in the world do they have these chloropleth maps? So a chloropleth map is a geographic map that has borders drawn on it. Maybe it's states in a country or provinces in a country, whatever you want to say, or maybe it's counties in a state. So I did counties in a state because I wanted to pull some job postings and I wanted to populate that map with those, that data. So the end goal for the project was to scrape a website, put that data in a database, populate that data to a data frame, and then push that data into a map. And the kicker of it all, have that available on the web. Unfortunately, it is no longer available on the web because Heroku took their free tier away. So I can't show you this anymore. But let's talk about how I broke that down into steps for MVPs. So my initial goal, the first thing I really tried to work on was just simply scraping the website. I had heard of Beautiful Soup before. I kind of had looked at it a little bit, but I had not really dived in on it. So my initial goal was just to scrape the website, make sure I was getting the data back that I wanted to get back, and then I could go from there. That eventually turned into scrape the first 50 rows of that site, and I'll explain why as we go further. My first update, once I had the data scraping successfully, is I started putting that data into a SQLite database. This is when I discovered I was really only getting about 50 rows back, but there were like 300 on the page. When I started looking into this, I discovered the page loads dynamically. So you literally have to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page to get the next set of 50 entries. Yes, it absolutely sucks. I hate web design like that. But what this made me do was this made me refactor my code. I had to go in and add Selenium for my next MVP part of the process. I went in, I added Selenium, and I started to try to find a way to get that page to scroll. I had to do a bit of searching on this, and this took me a little while to figure out because I'm not familiar with JavaScript. So JavaScript is one of those languages that I just can't seem to quite get my hands around. I, at some point I will get there, but it's just not one that I have been focused on lately. Anyway, I eventually found the command that started making the page scroll. It was a very happy day indeed. But then I faced a new problem. How did I determine that I was actually at the end of the page? So I started researching on that and refactoring my code some more and making some more changes and then adding in some weights. And, you know, before you know it, I've got this entire thing scrolling the page. So now I've actually got the data coming in. I'm getting, you know, 200, 300 rows when I make this go. It's time for me to go over and switch over to what I initially wanted to use in the first place, which is PostgreSQL. So I took the code that was going to be for the SQLite and I changed it all up to, again, refactoring it to make it work with PostgreSQL. And I set up a SQL database on my computer and I started that up and I just tried to see if I could get everything to load. And as I started doing that, I started realizing that well, my code is going through the page is good, but eventually you realize that you got to start taking some of these job postings off. And so I started inactivating them if they weren't appearing, right? Well, that's where I ran into a weird problem because all of a sudden I only had 50 job postings that were active because my scroll, the page took too long to load. And so the page thought it, the scrolling thought it was done. So... <laughs> You know, you have to go back in and add another check, add another way to error check that. But again, it's more refactoring of the same code. It's more things that you're learning that had you try to do all of this at once, you may have gotten frustrated and given up, or you may have not saw this somehow. Maybe the site was responding slower on the day I was trying this and that ended up catching this error. Now that we actually had the data, I needed to pull that into a data frame. That was relatively easy. 
And then I needed to actually get it to start serving on a web page. I ended up going with Dash by Plotly and went with that because I knew it supported a chloropleth map and I was able to also just put the data into a table on the page. So I got everything showing correctly there and I went ahead and I inserted the map, but I didn't start the actual process of putting the data on there just yet. That would be my next kind of MVP after that. I was finally able to insert the data into the map and connect it to the FIPS codes that I had found in a GitHub repo. And thus, I had a local version of my site. I did some styling and stuff like that, and then had to hack on it a little bit more to get it to actually cooperate with Heroku. If I had started that process and just tried to do everything, I would have never got it done. There, were, there was a lot I learned in that time and not all of it directly related to the data analysis piece. Some of it were more general Python things that I just simply hadn't used before. My time in that project really showed me a lot more about how functions could be useful in Python and how I could approach things in a more object oriented way. This really ended up cementing a lot of things that I learned about Python at the time. But being able to think in functions and about objects was something that really ended up making it a whole lot easier for me to try to visualize how something should work. Learning as much as I did about functions and just being more object oriented really made it a lot easier to understand kind of the workflow that I might try to attempt if I was going to try to program something. That was a huge step for me because it was something that I hadn't had to think about as much in SQL, but it was something that was a lot more important in languages like Python and others. There were a couple of other projects I had done before that that were a bit more general programming kind of automation stuff, and they were really helpful too. But this one was by far the most ambitious one I had done, and it was one I grew a lot through. And I do have a project planned that I think I'm gonna try to write in Lua. And this is the approach I'll take. I'm a bit of a beginner when it comes to Lua. I feel like I've got a decent grasp of the starting points for it. So I'm almost to the point where I'm ready to get started on this. This is the approach that I will take. I'll figure out where to start and I'll figure out what those stopping points are along the way and likely go and try to refactor my code over and over again to make it better. I hope this helps you along the way. I hope that you can get something out of this because this to me was a huge help. And I had always seen people talking about creating projects, creating projects, creating projects. But for me, it was sometimes a struggle to think of those project ideas. And so that's why I think the refactoring aspect of this was so helpful. And the MVP aspect of this was so helpful just because it's something to work forward to. Then you get there and then you reevaluate, you reassess and you refactor. So what language are you trying to learn? Do you have any projects in mind that you're trying to work toward? Thanks for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.